Welcome back to the Hot Pot of Coffee podcast. My name is Brad. And I'm Amanda. And I forgot to turn on a timer, so right now I am opening up my app. Let's see here. Uh, <laughs> stop. Okay, start. Well, what a journey that was that Dude, you I'm just so took us through. And I'm in pain. Yeah, what did you do last night, Brad? Bit my lip. <laughs> so... I had to drive home from Vegas because I, I was in Vegas for a work convention and uh, I didn't get much sleep the night before just because I had to be up super early the morning I left because apparently checkout is way earlier than noon now. Isn't it normally like 11? Yeah, but like I had to check out earlier than 11. Why? I don't know. They just texted me on my phone and they were like, you have, like it's time to check Treasure out. Treasure Island I, personally yeah. texted you. No, well, your fucking phone is in there. <laughs> so they texted me like at nine. And it was like time to check out. I was like, uh, okay, but it was fine because I had to drop Susan off at the golf course on my way out because she was meeting two of the reps from Vegas to golf. So I was like, oh, okay, whatever. So I left. Um, but I was super tired because I'm not even going to give. I don't even remember his name, but I'm not going to give him any. But we went to some stupid thing that night, and it wasn't funny. So, A comedy show? Yeah, there's nothing funny about any of that. So that's not making the <laughs> podcast. Um, but uh, That's always sad. I was super tired, even after drinking a, a energy drink. So, And I'm prescribed this, So, uh, but I took one of my Adderall. And I haven't taken an Adderall in a long time. I've been trying to, like, not... Although, if I go to med school, <laughs> I'm going to read You're going to need them, yeah. But I've been taking a long time, and uh, I'm like one of the only people left on IR Adderall immediate release. So it like hits fucking hard, and it's a high dosage. And like I took it, so I'd stay awake in my drive. Oh, I stayed awake. Um, <laughs> you were so focused but on that drive. I was so jittery and so fucking like... Cause Oh my God, I I kept biting my lip and I woke up this morning and my lip was like swollen. So if I sound like Steven Seagal, I'm sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it hurts so bad. Yeah, you keep doing that too. Yeah. Thank God I'm not gay. I could not suck a dick right now. Ugh. How horrible for you. Oh God. But um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Vegas was weird. How so? Well, it it's hard to explain because when people think Vegas, they're like, oh, yeah, bro, Vegas. But like when you're there <laughs> for work and especially as, you know, I every second of my day was planned. Like I had to be up every morning at like 6 a.m. really early. I had to be downstairs. I had to be at this convention, which had 30,000 people in it. I could not be a minute late. In fact, I needed to be 15 to 30 minutes early every day because the fucking vice presidents and former presidents of my company were at this like event. And by low p person on the totem pole, I'm not even that. I'm dog shit underneath <laughs> the cat throw up. So, Which is currently on your carpet. Yeah. Well, my cat threw up. And I don't want to clean it up. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I just don't have any paper towels left. So <laughs> it's going to sit there for a minute. Um, it gives, It's kind of like, uh, you know what that is? You know, it's just contemporary art. It's contemporary art. <laughs> Someone it's walks beautiful. in my house like, is that cat throw up? I go, no, it's actually a piece by Jose Guandardo. <laughs> oh, my God. Who's that? Oh, he's a contemporary artist out of New York. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just use an accent when you said New York? Yes, yes, I did. Um, but so it was every second was planned. And then after that, we had like we went out to dinner every night and I was schmoozing. Can you world class schmoozer? I'm a world fucking class schmoozer, dude. If that was my job, <laughs> I killed it. I fucking killed that convention. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I had some amazing conversation with some super high up people and I just fucking killed that shit. So if I stay with my company and I don't end up going back to medical school, um, I'll probably have a bright future, but it'll be in some shitty state like Cincinnati. So, yeah, that sucks. Um, mm -hmm. But it was a lot of fun. The convention, if, if any of you listening to this have ever been to a convention at the Venetian, it's, it's fucking unbelievable. There's 30,000 people in one room. 
Imagine how big that room is. And we weren't shoulder to shoulder. You could probably stand like 10 feet apart from each person in that room and not touch. Well, no one's arm span is probably 10 feet. But no. you know what I mean. It, it, was, <laughs> it was fucking insane how large this room was. Um, and then I played some blackjack. And I'm really good at blackjack, so. Yeah, but how much money did you bring home? Um, I'm down. Yeah. But there's a reason <laughs> I'm down. Okay. I was up. I would go like up 350 and then like down 300 and then back up. Because the thing with blackjack is I know every hand now. I memorize what to do on every single hand. I know the statistics for every single hand. I'm not going to say I was counting cards, but I was keeping track of how many face cards and if you ask a dealer, they'll tell you how many decks they're using. So they were using six decks, and there's 16 face cards in each deck. So 16 times six is what you do, right? Which is 84. Sure. Maybe. And <laughs> um, and then I would just keep count of how many face cards were, were showing. And so I knew the statistics of hitting a 10, and that was doing my betting. So I was doing pretty well. And then the the last time I played, I was having a great conversation with like two surgeons at my table. And uh, and honestly, I was like, eh, I'm even. I should probably like back off. But I was having a great time just like talking to these two guys. And uh, so I was just like, fuck it. So I just kept playing. And, uh, and it was totally worth the money. Because in my opinion, sitting at a table for two or three hours, having a, the free drinks and which I don't drink. I had Coke, but it was free. <laughs> um, I was, everyone was like, can you bring me a whiskey sour? And I was like, can I have a Coca-Cola? Can I have milk? Can I have milk, please? <laughs> Chocolate milk? So, yeah. So free free beverages. Mm -hmm. You get to sit around and talk and play a game. A hundred bucks is worth it. Totes. So, uh, milk. Here we go. So I have to do like five per podcast now. I do five yeah. per podcast. One, okay. one is good. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. Let's see. Shit I saw in Vegas. Oh, some guy. I'm sitting there the first night playing blackjack. And I hear screaming in the casino. And I'm like, oh, great. Is like something going on? And like I turn my head. And there's this dude... He's screaming and yelling at the top of his lungs, doing uh, cartwheels through the aisle. Did he win? He won at the, uh, like at a the jackpot. I don't know. He was on the uh, craps table. Oh, <laughs> craps is actually not that people. Oh my God, I hate craps players. I was talking to one of the doctors, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm a craps guy," and he's like, "It's a super complicated game." And this is the first day, and I said, "It's it's technically the most complicated like game." in the casino. That's why people are scared of it because there's a lot of things to do. Yeah. And I said, I guarantee you I can learn it in one night. <laughs> and he was like, okay. And I went home and watched a one YouTube video for 16 minutes, came back the next day, explained the whole thing. And he goes, yeah, that's craps. <laughs> <laughs> it's super complicated. And probably, I have no idea what it is. I'm not going to lie. But there wasn't like, I was at the Venetian and there wasn't a lot of kids there i would say the average age of vegas this week because of this conference was probably 50 and i mean they were somewhere else they were they speaking were of, they were into clubs speaking of speaking of what i get into the elevator the night i leave and there's this old guy okay in the elevator and his like i don't know if it's his daughter it mm -hmm. must have been or someone was leading him to the elevator and they like, put him in my elevator and like pressed the button was like okay this is our room number go up there like and change i was like interesting and i saw like water on his feet and i was like oh he must have like spilled it someone must have spilled a drink on him and then i looked up and like he pissed his pants oh like there was you know how when you spill water on your pants you can tell when you spill water on your pants like all over the front and shit yeah this guy had two long wet spots going down the inside thighs of his pants that's so sad and he was just standing in the elevator like he was just chilling like he didn't give a fuck I was, like, was he just like drunk as maybe fuck? Maybe he had Alzheimer's. Maybe. That's sad. I don't know. I hope he was just like drunk and stupid instead. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't. Uh, Your didn't only ask. crazy story of Vegas. I didn't have many <laughs> opportunities to uh, look around. I did. My whole thing this weekend was I. Uh, I. Uh, I told Susan this. I, she was like. 
oh, what are you going to do if you win big? And I was like, first of all, you're not going to. That's th- These casinos don't <laughs> pay their sure lights on it. you winning. Second, <coughs> I said, if I can turn this $300... <coughs> Jesus. Sorry. I said, if I can turn this 300 into 1900, I'm going to buy myself a Louis V. Oh, a Jesus briefcase. Christ. There's a briefcase from Louis Vuitton I really want. Just get a normal one. No. It has the same function. No. I want to flex. No, you don't need to. <laughs> anyway, no, I wasn't going to do that. Um, of course not. You were going to invest it. Give me a fucking break. But, 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 <laughs> but Vegas wasn't. Um, I'm not a huge Vegas person, honestly. I, I think I would have had just as much fun playing blackjack with a bunch of people just like sitting at my table with fake chips than uh and like five dollars a person in or something. Yeah, like I, I would have had just as much fun. Like I, I don't need to do that. But next time I go either to Vegas for a convention or gambling, I'm gonna bring an actual bankroll. So I was reading this thing. <laughs> what? So if you there's highs and lows in blackjack, right? Like mm-hmm. I would get on a high and I would win like seven hands in a row and I'd be up 300 bucks mm-hmm. and then I'd go on a low. And the problem is, is the reason people lose their money is because they can't ride out the lows. If you can ride out the lows, statistically you will come out even if, if so the house on a six deck on a six deck and you know, every single card combination and what to do the house has a 0.5% advantage on you. If you do not know and you're just guessing, the house has a 2.6%. Uh, just, no, I swear to God. You're just I looked all numbers this up. right now. I looked all this up. I don't even care. So <laughs> statistically, you'll probably come out even if your bankroll is large That's enough. It's just like, oh, statistically. Yeah, well, people don't also don't know how to stop, and that's why they lose all of their money. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, the trick is when you're up, stop. Take a break, walk around, jerk off in the bathroom. I don't know. Yeah, clear, Just clear your head. Clear your head a little bit and then <laughs> go back. So, yeah, Vegas wasn't anything special, man. I don't think I'd live there. Like, I, Who would I, want to live there? I don't, I don't know. Compulsive gamblers. <laughs> People who have to move for well, work. They shouldn't Nike live headquarters there. They're is compulsive there and, gamblers. Well, yeah, what was your, um, the view from your hotel room? Brad? Oh, my God. <laughs> So, karma is a bitch, Mm -hmm. and I feel like this is perfect. So, I was staying in Treasure Island, not the Venetian, but I was like, I hope I get a really good room, and that way when I look outside, it's the strip, and that would be really cool. Also, I can't sleep in Vegas. It's way too fucking loud. I was on like the ninth floor, and my room wasn't facing the strip, and I still heard everything and I could not sleep. Anyway, that has nothing to do with this. So I get into my room and, and Treasure Island has been redone. It looks pretty nice. Like I'm sure there's jizz stains everywhere still, but you don't put a black light on there. Yeah, no. Um or do because you won't see anything because everything it's is just covered. gonna all be glowing. Yeah. <laughs> um gross. gross. So <laughs> don't touch it. Did you touch anything? Did you touch the comforter? They don't wash that. No what? They wash the sheets. They yeah. Don't, they don't wash the comforter. Yeah, I'm aware. Okay, good. I I sleep with the sheet over me. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> and that's how I got a venereal disease. <laughs> so uh, I walk into my room and I go to the curtain. And I'm like, I wonder what my view is like. And I open up my window and the only thing in my fucking window is Trump Tower and just a big <laughs> fucking Trump. Oh. That's all it says. Trump and I was like oh my god I deserve this <laughs> it was I just closed I didn't open up my window at all the entire no one deserves I was that. just like god what a fucking douche that's like some Kim Jong-un would do just put his name on that's a that's why they're best friends yeah. it makes sense they get along so well it's because speaking of I'm not talking person. politically I just don't like Trump as a person <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck about his politics I just don't like him as a person I mean, you do a little bit I don't like people who pretend they're successful when they're not. Um, (laughs) Yeah, that always. Are you talking about yourself, Brad? Shut the fuck up. (laughs) So, yeah. Let's see. What else did I... Uh, I'm trying to think of what else I saw in Vegas. There was... uh, 
You didn't get out much, so. I didn't get out much. I don't have any crazy stories. It was windy as fuck. Yeah, that's Vegas. It was so windy. It was messing up my hair. I was so angry. Oh, my God. Shut up. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it, it was, like, the most professional Vegas experience you could possibly imagine because every single person you saw in sight was wearing a suit. Everyone was on their best behavior because their bosses were there. And it, it was just <sighs> fucking weird. It was a weird experience. It does sound weird. Yeah. Except the only time I've ever been to Vegas, I was like 18 and it was on a school trip. So there was a lot of parents with their fucking kids there. And I was like, why are you bringing your, yeah, I don't understand why are you there that. for school? What the fuck? No. <laughs> so we had like band and choir. Teaching tour. economics. No, we had band and choir tour. So I was in choir. And so we would go on like a tour and sing around the fucking country and so we went to like. You're such we a go? fucking loser. We went. Shut up. We went to Vegas. Um, we just like went on the strip one night and like went to the Bellagio and watched the fountain and just like I don't know. We just. I did do that. That was fun. Some people I were with were like, "No, I don't want to do it," and I was like, "Me neither." And Susan was like, "I've never seen it." I go, "It's." That was not me. Wow, Brad, you always give me I, shit. Oh, it's my mommy. Hi, babe. You're why you call me babe. I think she went to send this to my dad. <laughs> yeah. She went to send that to my dad. My dad sent me a text the other day. It was like, hey, sweetie, what do you want for dinner tonight? Blah, blah. And I was like, uh, I think you meant to text mom. He's like, oh, sorry. And I was like, fucking old people, dude. It's like, at least that was a tame text message. Yeah. yeah. Could have been bad. Uh, so what was I saying? Oh, people bring their kids. Yeah, that's weird. Fucking weird. Let's go on a family vacation to Las Vegas. That's a really great idea. It is idea. really weird. I don't know. And Vegas has always pushed that like, this is a family destination. I'm like, no, it's no, not. it's not. Every other car is a billboard truck with hookers on it. No, and they pass out flyers with hookers on them Did you know that's a, Did you know that's a giant scam? Do you know what it is actually? What they do? What? So um, we read up on this because we were really interested in like knowing <laughs> oh, the scam. You. Yes. <laughs> and uh, no, we're really interested in the scam because it's illegal in Clark County. Okay. Prostitution's illegal in Clark County, which is Vegas. So it's only legal right like around between Reno and Vegas. That's where it's legal. So I thought they had like. No. Prostitution is completely illegal in Las, Las Vegas. Huh. However, what they do is they have private strippers who come to your room. And mm. it's the only place in Vegas that's besides one other where you're allowed to be fully nude. So you can only be fully nude in a strip club if alcohol is not being served. Oh, okay. In Vegas. Not in Miami. <laughs> but in Vegas. That's the only way you can be fully nude. So what they do is you call this company. Well, this company is basically a giant pimp. And what they do is they collect money. So let's say, let's start and I'm probably realized probably like 200 bucks, right? So you'll pay 200 bucks for a girl to come to your room mm -hmm. to do a private strip show for you, fully nude. Okay. And then what the, the girl doesn't get paid at all from this. This guy on, uh, I think I was reading a Forbes article or something on it or whatever. He did like an investigation into this. Mm -hmm. This is what I was reading. So the girls don't get paid. They get paid in tips. So what these oh. girls do is they come, they strip for like 10 minutes, and then if you um, if you want any more, you'll have to like tip them oh, okay. and keep tipping them. So like they could maybe continue the dance for 50 more. If you want a lap dance, probably 50 more. If you want a hand job, it's probably 100 more. If you want sex, it's probably like 500 more. And the problem is the girls on these billboards, they're not the girls that come to your room. <laughs> the girls that come to your room are fucking rank. How do you know? Because I read this. <laughs> do you think I, someone whose biggest fear is an STD, would ever do this? <laughs> also, someone who doesn't, who looks like this, oh. I don't need to pay for sex. Come on, let's be honest. Okay. Sure. Although dates are kind of paying for sex. Mm -hmm. Date is a date is prostitution. If you disagree with me, go fuck yourself. You're probably an anti vaxxer and don't have a good opinion. So <laughs> Oh my god. See, we'll get into that. But um That's my refrigerator. You probably can't hear it on the podcast, but I can in my mic. So basically what happens is they'll send you the ugliest girl they can. Mm -hmm. I mean if you're paying for that though, do you really care? Well, no, no, here's the thing. And yes. 
So I'm not asking you no, if you well, care. That's true. <laughs> but what they do on purpose is they send you like the grossest girl and then you can call back and get a new girl, but it's like fifty dollars. Oh my god. So what they'll do is they'll send you like three or four just rank fucking women with like no teeth. That is so sad. And then you'll have to keep paying Those them. Poor and then girls like that and then like, like a f- the bait. Finally like a five will show up and you'll just have to drink yourself into a stupor to fuck them. Um, which isn't worth it because you're still going to get an STD. And then that's how that works. So <laughs> it's, it was really interesting seeing all those billboards. Um, but the, the anti-vaccine reminds me. So I was talking to like this higher up at a company. I'm not going to dox him either. Cause he probably doesn't want this going out, but we're talking about the anti-vax movement mm-hmm. and how much of a joke it is. And he was like, Oh yeah, I think it's stupid. Blah, blah. And I said, I'm, I'm for it. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> "No." He was like, "Wait, what?" You can't be telling and I people said, this. I said, "No, I'm for anti-vaxxers. I am personally vaccinated, but I am totally support the decision." And he goes, "I feel like there's a twist coming." Oh, and I little said, does he know? <laughs> Here's the deal. <laughs> I said, "Let them die." <laughs> It's not them that's dying. It's their poor children that don't have a choice. It's their bloodline. Let it die. I'm also, so- it's exposing people that can't be vaccinated, like like kids with cancer, kids with ass cancer that can't be vaccinated, and they well, have to die. First of all, what the fuck is ass cancer? Don't you, you know mean that, prostate that cancer? Cards Against Humanity card? It's no, I only have. I only know one Cards Against Humanity card by heart, and. In our games in, in college, if anyone played it, no matter what, you win. I had one of those as well. It's bees with a question mark. <laughs> if you played bees with a question mark, you automatically won. Because it doesn't make it doesn't fit into any of them. It's like bees? <laughs> <laughs> or jerking off into a pool of children's tears. That's a good one too. Do you want to know my favorite? I think I've told you this before. I feel like you're going to tell me either way. So <laughs> it's Daniel Radcliffe's delicious asshole. <laughs> would you eat out no a dude's asshole no if it was like what if it was like no. what if it was like no. liam neeson no not liam neeson sorry <laughs> liam uh thor's brother yeah no whose asshole would you eat if you had no, to I didn't want you to, had to if i had to or serious dies oh my god this is a horrible scenario i'll answer if you answer you, okay no i don't want to know your answer you know my answer. I do. Mother of dragons, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's my same answer. Yep. It's the cleanest <laughs> asshole in the world. Mother of dragons. <laughs> While the dragons watch. That's weird. And lick their lips. Ew. Yeah, it's weird. That's super weird. Um, oh, this is a good one. Would you fuck Danny DeVito? No. If, 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 <laughs> if, if, if it was between fucking him or serious dying? Oh my god can you not serious is her dog by the way stop, you def- stop like would you rather using have, my dog would life? you rather have serious killed or fuck danny devita oh my god i'll f- no i don't <laughs> like this scenario do it i don't want to do it no i would you would fuck danny for cadell DeVito. yeah what about for serious no don't look at me like that How dare he's you? not my fucking dog Okay, I've told you this multiple times. If we were in a zombie apocalypse and I was hungry, I would eat your dog. That's only because he's meaty. Yeah, he's so <laughs> meaty. Dude. I, but not a, he's not fat. I have a bottle of unperishable fucking barbecue sauce just for serious. <laughs> no, stop. You're horrible. Goes great with uh, flank steak and pit bull. <laughs> the rapper. Or the singer, whatever. Both. Mr. Mr. Worldwide. Mr. Worldwide. Dude, uh, oh my God. Do you think anyone owns a pit bull named Mr. Worldwide? I will very <laughs> soon. <laughs> what? Like well, the next uh, pit bull I adopt. You're going to name it Mr. Worldwide. You bet your ass I'm going to name it Mr. What's, Worldwide. What's like an abbreviation we could call it so that no one would know? I want everyone to know. Um, what are you talking about? Uh, Mr. W. Just call him Mr. W. Mr. W. What's your What's your dog's name? Mr. Mr. W. W. Mr. W. Or WW, just for short. Just W. And they're like, what does that stand for? <laughs> Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> and they'll be like, oh, because it's a pit bull. <laughs> I really want to get a pit bull now named Mr. Worldwide. Yeah. And then have him meet pit bull, and then the universe explodes. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
Did you, have you seen the, those memes where it's like it's like Pipple smiling and it's like a bunch of adorable Pipple smiling and then it has Pipple at the bottom smiling. <laughs> it's just like a collage. Oh my god, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful meme. Um, we got from anti vaxxers to eating your dog, but yeah, no, I I I I think anti vaxxers should keep doing what they're doing so that their whole bloodline no, dies. Like, I, oh my god, did you see though that Italy? I think it was Italy. They banned. Um, like, you can't be in school if you're not vaccinated. Like, they don't give a shit about yeah, religion. Yeah, meanwhile, in Arizona, we made new fucking <sighs> laws. Because we accommodate for religion here. This is the fucking it's South. Fortunately. Oh, that reminds me. So I saw the most wonderfully hilarious license plate the other day. And... If it's not funny, I'm going to be disappointed. It's, it's not... It's not funny. Look at her backtrack. It, no, 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 it's not funny just because it's, uh, it's, okay, well, first of all, I first saw this, bu the bumper sticker, and it was like, dads against their daughters dating Democrats, and I was like, oh, fuck this, <laughs> and then I just look, and there's more, like, Republican paraphernalia on that, and then I look at the license plate, and it says GOP first, and I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, like, it also surprised me because usually they're all like, God first. But no, this guy's putting the GOP first. It's probably like Mitt Romney's car. <laughs> My favorite part about Mitt Romney running was when he was like, he'd be at like press conference and stuff drinking like chocolate milk. Like that was a huge <laughs> thing because he's Mormon. He's like, oh, I'm getting so fucked up on chocolate milk. <laughs> um, oh my God. So. Uh, that was horrifying. What was I? <sighs> I forgot. You forgot. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um, was that what you wanted to talk about that you were looking up on your phone before the podcast? What? What were you looking up on your phone before the podcast? You're like, I had something to talk about. No, no, I was, I, I was going to say something about it. There was a country, because someone had posted a thing that was about the Italy thing where they were banning like unvaccinated kids from school, but then some country was like, well, we're just going to ban unvaccinated people, and they like won't allow unvaccinated people into the country, and I couldn't remember which country it was. <laughs> I was like, that's actually pretty smart. Oh, very interesting. Let's talk serious for a minute. No, not your dog. Um, why not? Did you... You heard what happened in New Zealand. Yeah. Holy fucking shit. So, this guy in New Zealand, this, like, fucking Nazi, went into, t like, two mosques, I think, and shot and killed 40 people, and he live-streamed the whole thing. And, like, you can't find the live stream on the internet anymore. Like, it's I mean, been... good. The FBI probably, like, just destroyed the interwebs or the yeah. NSA and took it down. Um, but I saw it. Like, right when it happened, I, I was on Reddit, and I watched this guy kill 40 people. It's horrible. It was weird. Like, I've seen a lot of people die because I was an EMT, so that part didn't bother me. It was just weird because this guy was... Straight up fucking psychopath. He was yeah. like laughing about it, but not in like the evil villain way. He was just like he got back in his car afterwards and he just like shuts the door and giggles and he's like, Well, that didn't go as planned. That's what he says. Oh my god. Yeah. He's fucking psycho. And he turns on the radio and he's just listening to tunes. Oh my god. This, how, how did they find him? I like, don't know. I didn't look that far into uh. it. But he, uh, yeah, fucking psycho. And he said subscribe to PewDiePie at the end, which pissed me the fuck off. Because PewDiePie had nothing to do with it. No. And he doesn't condone that shit. No. It's just so fucked up. Anyway, moment of silence. Okay. What? <laughs> Don't laugh. Moment of silence for our fall fallen brethren. I like how the synagogues, the Jewish synagogues in New Zealand, shut their doors last weekend in consolidation. Oh. This is funny. Is people think like Jews and Muslims hate each other so much, but every time there's like, when that synagogue was shot up last year, all the Muslims came and like helped out the families at the synagogue. And then now this, like, it's just, don't watch the news, people. The news is fucking wrong. Anyway, let's go, let's go back to the giggle fits. The giggle fits. So. What have we been watching? Today? Well, by watching, I mean ingesting heavily the, all, all eight episodes. The OA. The original asshole. <laughs> um, oh, the original angel. I just remember. Okay. That. The obsolete 
anteater. <laughs> <laughs> the obese anthropomorphic. No, because it's only two letters. The <laughs> obese animal. That's so lame. That'd be a funny vet show. The obese animal. The OA. The obese animals. It's like literally every single pet ever walks. Through. Oh my god. It was this. Oh, okay. Relax. There was So my very first patient this week. Oh well, how about you start that with yeah. actually what your week was, you <gasps> fucker? It was my first week working in a clinic as a veterinarian. STD clinic for animals. No, it's in our primary care clinic. Do animals get STDs? Um, they do have this one. It's called. Well, I know feline kitties have. A- There's feline AIDS. Yeah, but that's not an STD. It's not passed. It's not passed through sexual transmission. But there's only one thing. It's a tumor that's actually passed. It's called. <laughs> it's a TVT. It's called TVT, and it's passed through sexual like transmission. HPV almost. Kind of, yeah. Transmissible venereal tumor is what it's called. That's their only just from STD. Fucking a lot of bitches, huh? Fucking all the bitches. <laughs> fucking all the bitches. Is that what Sirius has? Maybe no. Sirius has an STD. No, he doesn't. That's not. So, like, like human STDs. When a dog gets an STD, are you supposed to call all the other dog owners and let them know, like, yeah. hey, I know we slept together three years ago, but my yeah. dog has an STD mm-hmm. and it fucked your dog. You should get your dog checked. Yep, that's exactly what you have to do. Or when you start seeing like papillomas growing on that, then you know. Hey, question. If a dog comes inside of a cat, will no. the cat get pregnant? No. Oh my God, no. This was just a question. Seriously? Uh, yeah. But why doesn't it work? Because they're different species. You so? That it works in Full Metal Alchemist. Oh my God. <laughs> what the fuck? Anyway. Anyway, it was my first week on clinical rotations and I had a bunch of patients this week. And my, my very first patients were these Animals. giant fat, it was a giant chihuahua and a giant papillon. <laughs> Maybe you should stop eating Taco Bell. <laughs> no, seriously, they were so fat. They You're were like, like, well, there's your problem right there. Your dog's little, fat as fuck. They were little roly poles. That's gross. They were cute. Little chodes? They were chodes, yeah. They were totally chodes. They were the fattest dogs I've ever seen. And what did they need? Uh, blood work. Because they're getting dentals because their mouths are disgusting. You're like, um, excuse me, ma'am, your dog's cholesterol is through the roof. Wait, no. wait, who, what did the owners look like? Okay, no, so the owner so the, the owner that brought them in, um, it's, it's her parents' dogs and her dad has Alzheimer's. So he like will give so them... So he forgets he feeds them? Yes, and he gives them his like table food and stuff. And so that's why they're so fat. So, but, so I shared that, like, a bowl... So we have a partner, and we like do our appointments together. Um, so it was more her appointment than mine. My very first appointment was with a crazy lady, and I knew it was going to be. I had a feeling. I was like, I'm going to get some crazy lady that feeds her dog a raw diet, and that's exactly what I got. She was fucking crazy. Why? And she's like, my dog is having diarrhea. I'm like, yeah, you feed it a raw diet. No shit, it's having diarrhea. Oh, and she put CBD oil on it, too, <laughs> because her dog has... You should um, try that for serious. No, it doesn't do anything. Um, it has... Uh, we should smoke serious sh- out. No, what is wrong with you? Oh, a dog did come into the into our ER, which we share, like, because our giant hospital, the ER is like the ICU, and it, everything is right next to us. Um, a dog did come on totally, totally fucking stoned. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, He's like eating Doritos. <laughs> No, no, no. They're way too high to eat anything. It's when they start coming down from it, then they get like ravenous. But <laughs> the yeah, and the owners are always like afraid to tell us that their dog ate their weed because it's like we're not, we can't turn you in. We're not going to turn you in. Just tell us your dog ate weed so we can treat them appropriately. Oh, excuse me, I need a sample of that weed your dog ate. If you could bring me the rest of it, uh, we have to run some lab tests. That'd be great. Yeah, it's, it's funny. No, but yeah, she put CBD oil because her dog has like luxating patellas. And I was like, mm, that's congenital. This isn't going to fix it, but okay. That's two big of words for this podcast. <sighs> the little patellas on their little knees move in and out. So is the penis. The penis is on their knees? Red rocket knee. Oh, God. What's wrong with you? Um, oh, and a I, lot. I um, also did a surgery today, which was, or not today, this week, which Can was you fun. do a... Um, do they have sex change operations for animals? No. 
Well, actually, yes. So. Oh my god. <laughs> but it's not what you're thinking. Okay, so if if Cadell, who is a male cat, gets blocked like with urinary bladder stones in his urethra in this little pee hole, and he's you just just put your mouth on it and suck them out. No, if they can't, if they if it's completely <laughs> it's not bestiality. That's just helping. It's completely obstructed. Just... You literally have to reroute his urethra to come out like he has a vagina now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at your cat and giggle, you fucking creep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that is the animal sex change. They're part of the LGBT community. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Cat walking through the streets in fucking place. Miami during the Pride Parade. It's just like, <laughs> I used to be a guy. <laughs> Except me. <laughs> oh, God. No, but it's great because in um, primary care, like when you're doing surgery, I was a primary surgeon, so I got to pick the music. And guess what I picked? Just take a guess. You and me, baby, ain't nothing no, but No, that's so fucking that's weird. It's <laughs> <laughs> so weird. <laughs> I pick Britney, bitch. Is there... Are there any McDreamies in the office? No. Oh. I mean, the women... Like, I love the fucking love all the, the women doctors. <laughs> are they hot? Mine is. Yeah? Yeah. Take a picture. And I'm not sending... Oh, you... <laughs> fucking weird. What is wrong with you? Um, no, so I scrubbed in and gowned and gloved and walked into the OR to Toxic, and it was fantastic. It was One of my magical. old co-workers was in that music video. He's the spaceman in the airplane. There's a spaceman in the airplane? Yeah, remember she's making out with the dude in the bathroom, and he's like in a... He's in a space suit? Or was one of the... Yeah, well, it was him in the bathroom, and then he was also the guy in the... Like, he made out with Britney? Astronauts, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. How'd he get that gig? Um, uh, probably through a pizza lunchable contest. <laughs> 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 like, we won everything back then. <laughs> you know, we actually won something off one of those one time? My brother did. Didn't he really? Yeah, he won, like, a virtual reality video game off the pizza lunchable <laughs> Thing. And it came in the mail too. Wow. Yeah, it was interesting. They were probably like, fuck, this kid followed through with this shit. Yeah. Um, anyway, back to the original asshole. So we're <laughs> re watching the OA because the new season comes out Friday and it's such a fucking trippy show. I've forgotten everything too. But there's so many plot holes now that I watch yeah. it the second time. Like the fact that they could escape and he goes, oh, well, you don't know the code to the door. Yet she can break the window with the fucking chair. Yeah. that's Well, I mean, that was his thing is to instill doubt like that so that they like hesitate and don't do it. Because they're like, oh, shit, what if I can't do this without him? Like, what if my friends will starve? You know, that's that's his whole plan. It's how he's it's how he manipulates. And then them. when the cop walks in, it's like, dude, he is so careful. And like, there's no way he left his door open. Like, come on. He, yeah. Like, no. That would not happen. He also lives in the middle of fucking nowhere, though, so maybe yeah. he would. Um, but it's but the show's really good, and when you watch it a second time, you notice, like, where... So the very ending of the first season, when she shows up in the white room, mm -hmm. if you remember from, like, episode three, that's Homer's... That's where Homer goes. Oh, when he dies. So right. she goes to Homer's place that's where she goes i didn't realize that until i just saw it oh. yeah oh, that's why she says homer at the very end so i'm interested in season two to see what happens um so spoiler we just spoiled the entire season for you well if they haven't watched it are they really gonna watch it now my big question with it is is it supposed to be because it takes place in the realistic world right yeah is it real or is this all in her imagination it's or real just, because there's no indication that it's all in her imagination. I know, but it's so weird. Like it's supposed to be weird. I know. She dies a hundred million times and comes back. That's way too many. You just reminded me of that Dane Cook thing. Don't where he don't goes, women exactly. Oh my god, Dane! There was a fire down the street. There was like a thousand firefighters. <laughs> no, there wasn't. That's way too many firefighters. <laughs> Oh my god, Dane, I'm so tired. I just took like a million hour nap. <laughs> no, you didn't. That's a fucking coma. You took a coma after work? I love that one. That's Dane Cook's best so one. So funny. Or his uh his dream book one. 
I don't remember that one. Dream bookies. I, yeah, I've been getting really into like dream books and what <laughs> dreams mean. And my friend came up, came over just in a panic the other night. And he was like, dude, I just have this crazy dream. Like, what does it mean? He's like, all right, tell me about it. And he's like, well, I'm running down the beach and there's a, there's a giant crab chasing me. And he goes through his dream book. And he's like, okay, crab, beach. Uh, was the crab uh, really big? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, dude, you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> what? Dude, you're. S-. And he goes, oh, dude, was the crab wearing a sweater? And he's like, yeah. And he goes, dude, you're super gay. <laughs> anyway. Well, Dane Cook, super funny. He's kind of irrelevant now. So. Yeah, but he still had some good one liners where he's like, I want to find a kid wearing a Superman shirt. And just go up and shoot him in the chest and stand over him and go, guess not. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> it is to me. Okay. But yeah, that's really all that happened this week. Yeah. Isn't it? I can't think of much else. I mean, we're at 40 minutes. Wow. Such a, that's like a really long time. It's like a million hours. That's like the This Might Get Weird podcast. It's like 40 minutes every week. That's yeah. it. It's because those girls don't like have time to do anything. Short and sweet little thing. Like my penis. <laughs> it's a short and sweet little thing? No, my penis is extremely large and scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's terrifying. Every girl that ever sees it goes, no, no. It just runs away. Yep, yep. every girl. That's what I uh, The yeah. older ladies hate it. Um, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Excuse me? Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, I'm so unattracted to older women, it's not even funny. And younger women, Jesus. That was, what is know. wrong with as you? As long as they're over 18, is that the age? Yeah, 18. Are you seriously questioning <laughs> what the age is? No, I don't think I could, like, date someone <clears throat> younger than, let's say I'm 28 now, probably 25. Maybe 26. Because any younger, and they still go to clubs. <laughs> oh and they don't have a job Ew. or career. I don't know. I'm just like indifferent to it. Wait, is that? No, I thought I found my chapstick, but I didn't. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I really want to talk more and make shit up, but my lip hurts really bad. Um, yeah, you need a mouth guard. Yeah. Let's I'm, go get you one. I'm going to put a large log in my mouth when I sleep. And just bite down on it. Or bite the pillow, but that's means something totally different. Mm-hmm. Anyway. I, think, I think a mouth guard will, will suffice. Yeah. Well, I get my new car tomorrow. Woo-woo. And I get my artwork tomorrow from Peter Lick. So tomorrow's a fun day. And anything else? I don't think so. All right, bitches. I think we're gonna we're gonna do a short and sweet episode this week. And I'm not really that short. It's like eight it's minutes shorter than still, normal. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah. If you uh, haven't left a like or rating on the podcast on Apple, please do. Mm, I love you. No, it's gross. Oh. <laughs> uh, remember to like and comment and rate that five-star rating and... Subscribe. Subscribe. Share. And, Tell your I, friends. I, I, yes. <laughs> All right. I love you. We'll catch you next week. Peace. Bye.